We're doing charcoal portrait today. Uh, this is the technique. This is what it just charcoal on gesso paper <coughs> and removing the lights. So a lot of you will know how to do it if you come into class and demonstrations. Um, this is another using a bit more pastel in that and more glazing. Uh, this has got a few more glazes over <coughs> uh, varnish, so you varnish them and then we can build them up to start using opaque paint because the underpainting on this is a charcoal and acrylic and then we can start using uh, doing figurative work as well which works quite well and putting the colour on first which is another stage but we haven't got much time today again we've only got an hour don't try and work along with me uh, <coughs> just stop the video if you're still going <laughs> by the end and uh, I'll put the end result on anyway uh, so this is the image we actually uh, I've put it online, which I've done it quite a few times this one, every time I do it it's different. Uh, I do like the, uh, the uh, picture though, so I'm not trying to get a likeness, that's the first thing you say. I don't want to get a likeness, I just want to get um, uh, an aesthetically pleasing picture or painting. All right? That's what I learned at uni, and uh, so you change the image to be something else okay um we use a willow charcoal a bit compressed charcoal which is black pastel and white pastel as well and a razor that's your willow which is a bit of burnt wood you need a jar of water with a big brush a palette for mixing color because they're going to be the glazes and then you need a hair dryer which i'm going to dry it off with to speed things up so like i said we're going to go an hour we need some acrylic paint again which is a uh, gallery acrylic, uh, just using one coat, one colour today, and uh, then we can varnish it and work back into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cover the whole paper. So this is paper. For those who know what we do, we know that it is uh, lining paper, and it's got a coat of uh, Winsor Newton gallery acrylic gesso over the top which makes it uh, waterproof and it makes it stops the paint from soaking in we don't have to do it all over i'm just kind of blocking in a mid-tone value all over the picture at the moment uh -huh. uh, <coughs> blend it so you get a flat gray tone which is going to actually be the grays in the, uh, the portrait the photograph which is a black and white image again we're using black and white image and you can add your own color use your imagination i hope everybody's uh, still safe and not too bored like i am bored at my tree but uh, anyway there we go flat tone and i'm going to draw the head now using willow charcoal again yeah <coughs> um i'm looking at the little girl it's a victorian picture it's got a lovely uh lovely eyes I want to get the chin on and I want to get the top of her head on and her hair is all waving in the background so I don't want to kind of draw every hair on her head I want to just draw the shape so because I want the shape of her face which is this egg and she's actually looking more or less towards me so you could have a slight angle if she turns that way but we'll keep it simple and we'll draw a straight line in the center of the egg <coughs> like that and because the eyes are level you can find out by drawing a line and they're always in the middle of the egg like that then we put a line in the middle roughly yeah and the hair kind of um, goes on top of the egg you know so it goes higher than that so you've got these lovely shapes around the face you know later and things like that so don't worry about um, adding a hair at this time as long as the eye position is halfway between the eye and your chin which is the bottom of the egg so if you look at it now <coughs> all the features are going to be in this part of the face yeah so i always start by putting a socket in the head's about five sockets wide and we put uh, it's a child so we make the <coughs> sockets nice and big uh let me know then if it freezes so i can run round and start it or whatever happens 
and because she's looking more or less towards me she's looking actually just slightly that way but if I put the pupil in the middle like that and then the iris and the top eyelid what you would do is just move the eye over slightly put the pupil so the pupils near enough in the middle uh, the iris and then the top eyelid inside that sock, uh, circle that socket the eyebrows are on top of the socket you can see where the change go the reason we use willow is we can do this you can just smudge it and blend it very easily to make the correct tonal value okay so that should be the correct distance between the eyes uh, don't worry about it don't start saying no it's not it's too wide and things like that it's the correct distance you've got quite a bit going on here uh, it's quite dark in that area uh, so we can blend that a little bit and the nose is just slightly off center like i said it's a slight curve really but uh, we do the nose just slightly to the right uh, to the left that side's the same tonal value as the cheeks because the light's coming from that direction and this side is in shadow and that's the tip of the nose where they get a white ball actually and then underneath there is where it sits on the face so because it's a child we've got ski jump going on nice and dark inside here blend it yep i make the eyes nice and big don't worry about them being too big much better being too big than too small um <clears throat> and then we've got the filter the mouth is usually halfway between the and the chin so your filter is the next thing which is the bit between the nose and the top lip and then in the middle of the top lip you've got three muscles there you've got the middle muscle and you've got the side muscles that give you the shape of the mouth and she's only got a little just a little uh, bottom lip and we get to the bottom of the egg and as you can see I've run out of chin so I make the chin bigger because we can do that because we're artists so there from a bottom lip which is that shape only slight uh, we've got a shadow here which is that and then we've got the light catching the lip uh, catching the chin there and then you've got the shadow under the chin so that should give you the shape of her face and if we look at the side of the head that's where the eye lashes are quite dark and look at the side of the head it's quite dark here and then you get angles so we've got a shape coming in from this left hand side going to the cheekbone and then she's got a lovely kind of chubby faces so uh, we just blend that away the side of the head into that shadow and then they do the same thing here think about angle angle of the jaw angle of the chin rather than and all that blends into the back of the egg she's got a lovely curl there uh, kiss curl and the shadow of the hair on her head like that. get rid of the lines if you don't want them because it gets a bit confusing and then uh, the top lips always in shadow quite full yeah nice and soft go do a, a continuous line all across the mouth just kind of break it up like that um nice wide eyes get rid of the bags she doesn't have any bags she has a lovely bit of skin there that catches the light just under the iris same on both sides you just get rid of the bags and if you get everything in the right place it should start to look like her but like i said we're not after a lightness so don't worry about that too much just worry about trying to make it look like a child so i've got some nice hair and i block that in because it's quite uh, it's quite dark around the face here uh, the hair and, and it blends like i said it blends onto a forehead so it casts a shadow there and it also casts a shadow down the side of her head here it's got a lovely negative space there which is some curls and as we're coming down here we've got the back of her neck which is coming in that direction uh you've got shoulder here uh this is the strap on a, a top and it's nice and light so we can keep that nice and light and that's the top of her arm which is slightly darker um, and that's the dirt the, of a shoulder yeah which is all the same tone if we look at the neck it's just a little line just underneath that bottom lip that top lip there so we draw a line like that and then that goes off the picture and that's as simple as that really and then I'm going to use um, a tissue to get rid of a lot of the um, mid-tone values in the, in the charcoal 
and then we're going to add uh, uh, these are, um, rubber. We can look at the background here and uh, uh, it's quite dark so I'll just blend that in a bit. Uh, I'm trying to be quite quick because I don't want to uh, I need to get to the stage where we glaze it and varnish it. Well, if we can varnish it, that'll be alright, but not necessarily. Whatever we can get to within the hour, near enough, yeah. Because we have to go and get some meat from butchers. Um, and we're blending that. Like that. Into the face, okay? So, put all that down, uh, get a bit of tissue, kitchen roll. Use the kitchen roll to give you this lovely highlight so look at the forehead there's a lovely light across the forehead uh -huh. and then it gets slightly darker on this side so we don't take it too much off because we want it to blend and uh, then the hair's catching the light there uh, as well and some of the curls uh here we've got the light just above a top eyelid there uh, usually it's a little bit lighter you get some reflected lights underneath and it's slightly darker between the eyes there and here we've got the, the middle of the nose, which is a lot of light coming off that. And then the corner of the eye and going into the cheekbones there. Uh, on this side we've got the same thing, but more light. Yeah? Uh, and it's the, the cheekbone turning to the cheek where the softness is. Yeah? And then a lovely soft light over the top lip. Uh, the nostril is in there underneath, not put it in yet. Uh, this little nostril here and the light just coming down at the side of that nostril. Filtrum, can't get my finger too small though. That's the filtrum, uh, the bottom lips kept in a little bit of light. This side of the mouth is a bit lighter and then the, the light on her chin. So that kind of blends in and this is still quite dark in tone around that area. All right, and then the, the chest Oh, the shoulder, <laughs> and just rub out the, this nice highlight on the shoulder and a bit on the um, entirely up to you if you want to leave a line in or blend it or whatever you want to do. So we're going, are we still on? Yeah. Good. Um, we're going uh, to use the rubber. So if you're doing a hair, we can just pull out some of these curls. Yeah. There's no way on earth you can put everyone, everyone in, not in this time frame anyway. Uh, the curl there is important if you want to put it in and some of this in a hair which you just scumble and then the forehead so the top of the forehead you've got to get a little bit of light uh, down to the top of her eyebrow so I'm just using the rubber uh, if, it's, if it's dirty just clean it with a damp cloth uh, I'm just using the rubber to go back to my white gesso underneath this is why your gesso is so important then I get a reflected light there Blend it with your finger. Uh, we get the half moon shape side of her eyes, and then you get the light catching the bit underneath the eye there. Like that. I'm going to have to stand back now and again just to see her face, so I don't get uh, either a bit of light uh, right in the tear duct area, and then the bridge of um, the cheekbone sorry, in there, which blends together around here. Okay. Um, a highlight, it's there, we can put that in with a bit of pastel later. The bridge of a nose, that blends into there, and then the tip of a nose, very light, so it's slightly coming towards you there. Um, you can see the reflected light around the nostril, and then the filtrum. The filtrum is always in the middle of the nose, uh -huh. so where you get the highlight here, you need to have the filtrum. Just over to one side, man. and then the top of the top lip. You've got to bring out that. Take a little bit of light off near this nostril. It's slightly lighter here. Again, highlight, uh, tear duct. Bring that down to there. Blend it. Take the charcoal off if you need to. And that goes into the side of the head. It's a bit more space than if you look. All right. So you've got a slightly turning and then there's some more curls around here. Like that. More curls, you've got a line there now. Top lips got uh, reflected light slightly. Uh, bottom lips got a bit a bit of light on it there. And then uh, the side of the mouth, lovely softness. So you just take the light off the side of the mouth. 
go to a continuous line. Uh, take the light off, that's the chin. That blends into the rest of uh, um, the neck. So we don't want to, like a line between the neck. I know you can see a little bit here where it's getting some reflection. And then we take the light off this bit. That's what's the strap on the shoulder. You can see how light you can get. And then you've got this lovely light here on the top of the curly hair. Curly hair. And we've got some on these curls here. Uh, which I'm going to use some compressed charcoal there to, to bring out those. Yeah. Um, again, look at the shape of things. Don't be too fussy. Don't put too much in. Want it really loose. Uh, that strap comes down here. It was off the picture. And then I've got one here as well. Which, uh, I left a bit more weight at the bottom of this um, area. She has got a shadow there as well, which is... Uh, coming from this uh, strap. So sometimes it's nice to leave a line where you get in like uh, uh, the shadow from that one on, on her shoulder and it's also casting a shadow here because the light's going from that direction. Okay, uh, keep the eyes nice and wide, keep standing in the middle <coughs> now and again. And then we'll blend a cheek again because that's a little bit too dark. That's all I need really to uh, glaze it. You start thinking, oh, what about your eyelashes and your eyebrows? We don't want too much fuss. We just want to position things and then we're going to glaze and remove the, the colour or the tones with a damp cloth. I'm just looking at the shapes around the you nose. Know, it's got three triangles, one in the middle. And there's more light on the centre and then at the side it goes slightly lighter because the light's going on this side and then it goes darker on this side yeah so if i'm just trying to create that softness before i fix it because once you fix it so i've got uh, yeah? um so i've got the, the top eyelid this is compressed charcoal only do this when you're happy with positioning really uh, you can move things you know, it's nothing set in stone yet. That's the top eyelid, a pupil. So that's how the eye is made, kind of made up. And she's looking at you. You'll get a little bit of dark in the teared up. Top eyelid always overlaps the bottom eyelid, like that. Uh, your nostril, a little bit on that side. And on this side, you can see the nostril there. This is just a dark shape. And again, the corners of the mouth, you drop a line down from the iris and that would be the width of a mouse which is not that wide and the same on the other side really just about there and then you just do the dirt bit in the corners of a mouth and then the middle muscle and that's it because that gives you a softness you can just see the makings of a line uh, inside the, the, uh, the lip and then that's the shadow again <coughs> keep dropping it uh, I'm just using the, this um, the compressed charcoal to put some darker tones where the curls are and that will make them come forward. Uh, so where the, you've got a curl there like that, uh, don't block in bigger areas because it just runs like mad. So you've got a really nice sh uh, shadow actually from that direction, which is the light cutting across the, uh, from the neck. Okay. And then that's softening uh, the shape around the neck. Again here, I've got some of these curls, side of the face, and then that goes off the picture. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so you've got a nice curl there as well. I'm going to put that uh, just pick out a few. Um, again, we'll use the rubber just to take the light. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. If you take the light off the bottom of the eye, there, that's where the colour will be. So that's where I take the light on the bottom of the eye. Uh, the half moon shapes at the side of her eye positions the, uh, the eyeball. So you've got more on this left hand side really because that's in shadow there. Um, and then like, when we put the colour in, give her different coloured eyes after. Like I said, we don't worry too much about the highlight because that's pure white and we're going to use a lot of, uh, we'll use some pastel for that later. So the thickness of a bottom eyelid, like that, catching the light, uh, and lovely negative spaces. 
in the background. Okay, nice and simple. Give it a spray. <coughs> so we'll start coughing. Let me stand over here, it's not too bad. Mm. Yeah, so is that your mum? I'm going to spray it all over like that. Make sure you spray the uh, compressed bit, otherwise, it's going to run like mad. Uh, we need to dry it off, so I've got my hair dry, speed things up. I won't talk while it's dry, it's spraying, it's drying, okay? thing to check then is when it's dry you just put your finger, a clean finger if you can just take the excess charcoal off the damp cloth and go over the uh, the compressed charcoal bits and if it doesn't come off you'll be okay to glaze can you see and some of it might blend we've missed bits but it's not too bad though uh, but the majority of that is black is just not coming off so I'll be okay to um, glaze it with some colour I'm going to speed that up as well. The bags are time actually. It's a term, yeah. Because uh, at this point, you're usually waiting for people to catch up. So, because I'm not doing, we can work a lot quicker. Alright? Uh, we'll take your time doing it. You don't have to rush to do anything. So, there I've just got some Red Sienna Galleria acrylics. I've put some in a, pal in a palette in a deep well, added a lot of water, and I'm going to mix that together to give me a glaze and a glaze is that there you go sorry i'm just checking your voices on oh, i thought you no ah as long as it's still good that's right and last time I, I started hearing my voice instead of it taping it uh, live so you don't have to put my voice on i'm getting because i'm going i'm listening for that anyway because it's dry i'm just glazing the whole thing with some bird sienna uh, it looks a bit too bright on there, but uh, uh, but picks up the charcoal, gives you kind of burnt umber look to it. You'll get some runs and drips, that's all that, I don't mind them. Um, the majority of the face, I don't want to be runny or drippy, so I can get a, a soft brush and pull away any drips. That's just start crying and things, you don't want. Just get nice soft areas in the face. Uh, you can leave shadows, you can leave drips in the hair and her eyes and you give a softness there with the eyes. Uh, you don't have to go down to the bottom of the picture. We can leave some, say if I do some warm here as well and then leave it on the other side. Uh, just dry your brush off to drag colour away or runs away actually. And then I'm just adding a bit more warm. Oh, and the flesh tones there. Doesn't really matter. Because you can always glaze, glaze it again later. Yeah? Um, like that, and soften it. Again, I need to dry it off. Otherwise, if I start rubbing out the, uh, the charcoal and the glaze now, I will go uh, right back to the white paper, you can see. So it's a bit too, it's a bit too damp. But if you dry it off, you have to work a little bit harder, but you can control. You can control how much you take off. A clean, clean one. It's going to topple a bit as well. Yeah. 
Uh, if he does cockle, and we've got some good quality masking tape, so uh, he, can, he can pull it off like that. You stretch it a little bit so you get rid of the bubbles or the wet bits of paper like that. And it will stretch, but you don't have to because it can go flat later. Uh, people go mad about cockles and muscles. Um, so that's okay, and then I've got my damp cloth. Um, not too much water on it and people keep dipping it in the pads in the pots with the water in it and you're actually picking up too much water you just want it to be damp and you want a proper cloth you don't want tissues or J cloth or anything like that so if I look at the picture again some of my underpainting a lot of it actually still there and that's what I want to use uh, in the picture so uh, to give me these nice kind of softness curls which are, I've used with the rubber uh, keep build straight and then the light on the forehead because you get this lovely highlight down to the the, the um, eyebrow there and it does come out a little bit in the eyebrow a little bit nearer I always keep the forehead kind of a bit flat in the middle nice work circles at the top there where they go a little bit later, like that, you'll start to see the, uh, the, the brush marks from my gesso coming out now, which gives you the texture, which people always wear. You get the texture on what it's actually there all the time. Soften the side of the head, the bit underneath the eyebrows. I'm trying not to take too much off, just do it slowly. You can see the thickness of our, our eyelid at the top. You can also see that stick your little a finger into the cloth to be, remove the, uh, the light under the eye and the bottom eyelid, like I said. The bottom of the eye and the reflection is going to be there, but uh, we need it brighter than that. There's a half moon shape on this side, it's quite big. Not as much on this side, but you are getting that light inside the eye. Look at the shapes around the eye. And you'll end up with a proper uh, proper looking eye really and we're going to work back into that to bring it out a bit so i'll just spread it a bit more because and once you start getting it damp again it comes off easier look at the picture you're using the picture as your reference like i said so we want to look at the picture and we want to bring out these little changes in tone uh get rid of the bags like i said you can soften that area it's just the soft tissue and then that comes down into the cheek so the majority of this side of her face is catching the light uh, in between the eyes it gets a little bit darker like I said and then we get the nose nice highlight on the end of the nose bridge of the nose that changes into another tone which is quite light and then here reflections above the bottom of um, the nostril sorry and around the nostril you see some lights as well like that. Uh, then that goes into a nice light at the top of uh, a lip which is a triangle shape like that, which brings out the filter again make it nice and light, light that U shape soften it a bit don't want it too harsh or silly cold so we get nice softness to that side of the mouth and then a little bit lighter to this side of the mouth just to bring out the top lip and that will give you softness right in the mouth uh, also underneath there you've got a nice reflected light reflected lights that make, that make the painting three-dimensional this blends into the cheek and it disappears into the background so i don't want to do too much there and then over this side again we've got reflected light here and we've got the shape side of her head here because this is getting a reflection but we don't want it as light as this side which you can take more off once you start taking highlights out uh, do the same thing inside the eye there you've got a lovely strong light comes into the cheek there and then blends with the rest of the face slightly. and this side of her nose uh, is a little bit lighter not much and then all of that blends into the forehead uh, so again over the eyebrows uh, a little bit lighter 
of that arbor and then that blends into the rest of the forehead. Yeah. So we're just taking the tones off to represent the colours and that's it. So I was to it. Alright. Uh, bottom of the eye colour again. Uh, the half moon shape. Uh, and the bottom eyelid which catches the light. Uh, the softness underneath the bottom eyelid that angle going to the cheek right? and then that blends into the rest of the cheek in the mouth you've got a, a reflected light on the middle muscle and down the side of the mouth the other two uh, muscles three muscles in there gives you a nice soft mouth and then the bottom lip catches a little bit of light that is the um, light on the chin what actually happens is your face goes a little bit darker usually towards the bottom of the egg so we don't want to go as light as up here because that's where the highlights are going to be yeah. <coughs> right. so i can pay, i can take the lights off around the head as well and if it actually gets a bit too dry because it's wet it's really hot in there you can wet it splatter it give you some textures like that something on the floor uh, and that will help with background shape so we can have a lovely negative at the back of the head there that blends into the shapes around uh, her hair the curly hair negative space that blends into the side of the head uh, just be careful with her face you don't want to splatter big areas and still have weird marks okay with this technique you can stop whatever you want you can say oh i like it it is i'm going to stop now it's an hard no i'm not and then uh, or you can just carry on until you uh overwork it i guess it's enough but yeah you can carry on you can get the highlight there it blends into that area that's the shoulder i've got a few runs there which are working well for shapes uh, this is the light uh, this is the light on here so I'm just going to use a damp brush to oh. take that off hmm? Can you do that? use a damp brush it just helps you to remove more colour more tone and then that goes into the shoulder which is quite light as well. Now we can use some pastel there, uh, white pastels. Side of my mouth, you've got a little bit of reflecting light. Uh, if you find yourself going too light, you can always go over it with some charcoal, willow charcoal. Uh, nostril, squint, highlight, nose, this side of the nose, blend it. And got top of the eye, where the highlight's going to be. And shapes under the eye. Okay. Again, I'm just going to wet this area to bring out the top of the shoulder uh, and that area. So I can take the light off at the back of the head, between the hair, blend the shoulder into the rest of the neck. Yeah. I may that disappear slightly, like I said. So you don't have a continuous line and then remove the light in the background you can play about with the background so it's lighter darker uh, and just keep rubbing yeah to get curly hair curly hair um i'll take a, a neck in a little bit so it's coming down from here don't have it too wide. <coughs> so that's the neck. And that's the shoulder. We can redraw now, uh, get some compressed, make sure it's dry a bit. Uh, use the compressed again for the eyes, pupil, top eyelid. They will just stand out now because this is a lot stronger. So, uh, pupil, top eyelid. 
the iris, uh, top eyelid, corners of the mouth, middle muscle, corners of the mouth. Don't do too much under the bottom left. Don't do too much here. You don't want it too dark. We can we we can use this as a just to emphasise the shape of the face there and the hair with the curls or whatever. Again, curls, piggly piggly, soften them, uh, nice and dark here because we've got some darker areas against the background. Uh, just dirt and that curl, um, you don't have to put curls in, it's entirely up to you. You've got a few shapes up there as well, put them in, blend them, soften them. Uh, we keep the chain a bit, but it's a little bit darker there. And um, we'll keep this like that. Again, you can, do it. you can have a lovely light shirt uh, next to a, a lovely dark shirt. And it's still going. Yeah. Not keep good. me off. No. Good. Good today. Being good today. Uh, so that's going to be the neck, and then I get the shape of the shoulder. Yeah. Just like that. Uh, that's a strap, and then this is a shadow on that thing. It's sometimes nice just to have a, a line at the bottom so it kind of links a drawing into a three dimensional kind of image. Okay, her eyebrows are not very dark and there's nothing else very dark apart from her eyes. So I need to spray it again. I'm doing for town. Yeah. Um, I need to spray it again. Just to fix everything, that's if you're happy with it. So you stand back, look at it, um, fix it like that, and then um, let that dry. So I need my hair dry again, <coughs> and I'm going to use a bit of white pasta. We see a pure highlights now, which are white, are the lights in her eyes there, both eyes. Uh -huh. You've got some white in the corner where the tear duct is, uh -huh. and the bottom eyelid, which I've already done, but we can add a bit more, which goes into a shape at the side of the thing. So you can glaze over this, but so don't put it too thick, uh, you probably wash it off. The light on the nose. We'll have two little spots there and then in the middle of the nose, about there, because that just changes direction. Uh, around the nostril, it's quite a light there actually. You can just rub these out if you like. At the top of the filter, you shape on the top of the top lip, it's quite a light. All right. And we've got a lovely bit of light on the lip. Okay, and then uh, like we'll use this for the light of a uh, top. Again, here. You don't have to do it all, just pick out the shape around uh, where the light will be catching things. It's up to you. Uh, you can use white paint. It's nice to see the transparency, actually. We're going to give her blue eyes, I think. So just rub out the light and just do it again. Rub out the light at the bottom of the eye. That gives you the marble effect. The reason we're doing this is because we're doing, we're using transparent colour and transparent glazes. So every time you do a glaze, you're going to see through it. So everything you put underneath is going to come through the glaze. So that's all we're doing really. Uh, a bit of cerulean blue. And I don't want it too opaque, so I just put my finger in it, a bit of it, like that. put it on, like that. wipe my finger and then take it off again. Because you want to see through the blue again, like I said, so you get that 
transparent glass, don't you? Yeah. We can look into the background as well. And that's going to dry. I'm not, I wouldn't do the whites of her eyes. You can just lift off the colour of the tone with your damp cloth. Don't do too much uh, opaque paint because you're going to spoil it actually. Because you want to keep this transparent. So. Okay, chin, keep working around it. Stand back down again. If you're happy with it, leave it. <coughs> Stamp your feet. Top of the forehead. Like I said, her here is a little bit lighter. We could use some uh, charcoal for that. Uh, pastel, like pastel. Uh, negative space in between the curls and the hair. I got some nice textures there where the water's dripped a bit. Uh, the back of her head here, we can emphasize the light at the back of her. So there's a depth behind the head. But you need to blend that in, you'll just have it strong light. You can do the same here up to right, so it's nice and just a little bit darker where the neck starts. And so, so there's a nice depth at the back of the head the space. I hope you're working along. <laughs> we usually have two hours to do this. We got to the stairs last time where we were glazing it, varnishing it and glazing it. We can varnish it. Again, a little bit more off the eye. But the only thing I use for darks uh, are compressed charcoal. Black. Soften the mouth again. Corners of the mouth. Get rid of the black areas because you want to make it curved. So here we start squinting now and you can see we're slightly lighter here, then it disappears up into I've got some blue there from the from her eye. Up into that curl and then it goes off up into uh, the back of her head or whatever, into the background. A bit more white, and we're going to use some white for uh, uh, to put into the hair, actually. Um, and not a lot. It's just where little bits of things are being caught by the, the light, little bits of hair being caught by the light. Okay, the tips. Um, there's a bit over here. It's quite nice. That's that curl, actually, which is quite nice. And then you get another things. But again, put it on, take it off. Um, we've got reflective light down the side of the face. If it doesn't work, just get rid of it. I'll leave it a bit softer. <coughs> if you do start to use the background like this, you have to keep it up. So, and see what happens? Because it's opaque, it just flattens the whole thing and you lose the transparency. So, with too much pastel work, will make you lose that uh, transparency. But sometimes it's good just to have it in the background, just to give you a little bit of light, the back of the head, and depth. Okay, keep looking around a bit. We've got a bit more light here. Uh, that's softer. Inside there is a little bit softer. Uh, it is quite dark, but then you get a nice reflected light. And then the top of the nose blends into the corner of the eye. So you get quite a distance there between the eyes. Nice softness. And if nothing else, you've got a lovely underpainting for an oil painting or an acrylic painting. And it's quite, it's done quite quick. So if you get something to sit for you, you can do it. <coughs> Don't forget the forehead. Lights at the top. Little triangles at the side, like that. And it's getting a little bit lighter there. It's still going. Quarter to two. Huh? Nearly quarter to two. Quarter to two. So I'll fix it, vanish it. 
I don't think we'll get to it next day, but I'm going to fix it by the ship. Use the cloth to get more off of it. You can't be fussy with the, your finger and the cloth. And that's, uh, that's the way you can get these last uh, soft areas. Okay. Instead of being too fixed. Oops, got blue in her face again. Picked it up. Should dry quite quick by that time. Uh, top of the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> better doing it with the cloth if you can rather than the pastel. You just put that in at the end really. Yeah. And light on the cheekbone, that's it. Fix it. Again, as per. Uh, make sure you've got the pure white in her eyes because uh, In the varnish board, they go a little bit dark, that's darker. Yeah, make sure you got everything. And hair dryer. Smells like a hairdresser's in here, yeah, man. Air spray, hair dryer. Air spray is just to hold the sparkle. Varnish yet, you can't do any more of that rubbing out. Okay, Kevin was asking me about the varnish. It's Ron Seal interior water base varnish. Well, oh, no, oily wood. Yeah. So I'm out again, make sure. It's coming off. Uh, get the lid off. Once you've varnished it, put a loads of different glazes on there. Uh, make sure your brush is clean. Start with the eyes, because that's where the whites are. And then just go all over the picture. Uh, it goes on white and dries. Um, excuse me. Dries, it, well, it looks blue under this light. But it's, uh, it dries matte or satin. Uh, the hardest part to get it on is the thicker parts of the charcoal because it just glides over the top so just make sure you, you go over the thick bits <coughs> and because it's water based it softens it again so you actually if you're not careful you want to rub it out again yeah? This one's slightly nice. Blends. Okay. Like that, see, if it scumbles, pick it off. Put your brush in your water because it's uh, quick dry, dry varnish. Again, hair dryer. Speed it up. I bet it's a bit shiny, is it? Yeah. And if you're going to shine, it's because of the varnish and the window behind me. So you can actually see if you get rid of the shine. Because it's quick dry varnish mm. and it's a hair dryer. And then clean your brush 
I'll just use a bit of colour to, to glaze it with. You can always rub the colour out if you don't like it because it's a glaze, so don't worry. Right. Make sure your brush is clean and not got white in it. Uh, a little bit of alizarine, I think. And then a bit of blue. And that makes purple. And we've already used sienna, so that makes warm colour. Uh, you can add any colour you like. Yeah. Has it gone off? No, no. Ah, but you're telling me it's gone off. So if you use alizarine, like that, you get a nice softness. Yeah. You don't have to do it everywhere. And you can rub it out as well. And because it's varnished, it's not going to go anywhere. And I use a bit of blue at the top. Or you can mix them together. You know. A bit of blue and I'll do it. It's purple. She's got purple hair. I'll let it run. It is a glaze. You can see through it. It's got a lot of water in it. She's had a blue rinse. Blue eyes. Uh, more warms if you want. Yeah. I do like the ones and drips, but so sometimes it can rub out again, doesn't it? It can rub out, yeah. So because keep it nice and soft in the flesh tone. Again, if you want to stop anything running, just hold dry. Because it's a glaze and you've still got your lovely colour uh, contrast underneath, I can rub out the colour to go back to my white glazes underneath. My white uh, highlights and contrast. So you can bring it out again. So it's the old oil painting technique. Instead of using oil, we just use acrylics and remove the paint and the tone of eye. And you've got, like I said before, you've got a lovely start to another picture. And I'll just show you another bit. Because you were saying it's lost all these white bits, aren't you? So I've got a little bit of white paint, small brush. You just have to be careful because nothing is kind of pure white except for the light in her eyes. And if I use this white with a bit of sienna or alizarine, I can repaint things like that. The lights in her eyes, yeah. uh, the light the tip of her nose. When you put it on, just touch it with your finger to soften it and get a highlight, a uh, bridge about the where it goes flat uh, filter them. nice light area there that's just bringing things forward again if we want to do the eyes the lights of her eyes we can just because it's an eyeball it's the middle section of the eye that gets most of the light which is the each side of the the iris, mm. yeah. so it's bringing it forward. Uh, if you want to use white on the lip and a lizardine, again we can put some on the lip again. Just add a bit of colour. It's got lipstick there. Eh? Uh, a bit on the bottom lip. And if you want to really go to town, which is what we do later, we can add uh, oh, more weight to this uh, the shape of the top. Don't just block everything in, just have uh, 
the light catching things, you see. Just going to bring it out. You can always get rid of it if you're not happy before it dries. So don't worry. Don't worry about uh, anything on this virus thingy. Hey. Apparently, some lion, some tags have got it in. In a, in a zoo in America, yeah. Oh. So it travels to the. Just use a bit of blue and white actually to bring out. That's the grandson, if you can hear him. Back row, blend it. And bits behind her head. I'm fiddling there. Eh? Yeah, you were actually fiddling. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. You can, you can it, just yeah, can you so? Yeah. It's nice, is it? Too? Yeah, it's a bit too much. So I just yeah. add the light on mm -hmm. the tip of her nose to make the nose come out, um, and reflections and whatever. So it's just highlights now, because you've got a lovely contrast there. Okay. Um, that will dry. Uh, I'll just do some out. I'll just put. I've got some reflective blue, and I've got some uh, opaque blue. So they're both blue. One's cerulean, one's ultramarine. Take the tape off. Without uh, tearing it. I do that, I like working fast. Yeah, Stand back. It's right. I'm dropping off again. You had a great big studio. Ah. There you go, finished, more or less. I could carry on with it, but that's all we're doing in an hour. And that's the idea of charcoal and acrylic glazes technique, which is an oil painting technique, but we're using acrylic instead of oils. And you could work over it with oils if you wanted. I'll just carry on glazing with acrylics. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, probably see you Wednesday. I'm not too sure yet. If not, it could be Friday. Uh, but I'll put it on the page because. I'm going to start doing something else like that. And I know I do drippy portraits, but throwing paint about in here is not going to work very well, so I need a bigger studio. All right, thank you. Put your, stuff, put your work online, and that's where everybody can see it, and we'll all say how wonderful it is. And stay safe. Bye. Uh,